Parkour. Every Minecraft player has done it at some point. The idea of running and jumping over a certain distance is so simple, however, there is much more to parkour than meets the eye. Here are 27 things that you might not know about Minecraft parkour. By going to the very edge of blocks, any special effects of the block are often nullified. This applies to soul sand, ice, water, lava, and even cobwebs. Triple Neos can be connected, and some players can perform very high amounts all without stopping. These are called chained triple neos. Even though Optifine is widely regarded to not have any effect on gameplay other than making the game run smoother, with very very precise parkour, the fast math setting can actually cause some real discrepancies. If you take damage at just the right time, you can actually jump higher than normal. Cactus and fire can be used to achieve this. Everyone knows that neos are possible, but you can add trap doors, glass panes, or even player heads and the jump is still possible, although much, much harder. The more jumps a player can do per second, the faster they go. This is why spamming jump under a 2 block ceiling makes you go so much faster, and why elevation momentum works. With head hitters, it's possible to do the exact same timing twice, yet only make the jump once. This is because of the tick system Minecraft uses for its physics. Furthermore, no matter how good you get at parkour, you will never be able to perform a successful head hitter timing every time. This is again due to ticks. While the most famous squeeze in parkour is probably the fence and cobble wall having a 0.025 block gap, the tightest is actually the double trap door squeeze having only a 0.024 gap window. Using redstone and slime blocks, it is possible to make what is essentially fully automatic parkour. Performing what is known as a 45 strafe as you jump will give you a very slight boost in momentum, allowing further jumps to be completed. The more precise the 45 strafe is, the more of a boost you get. 45 strafes can also be done multiple times in a row, again with each one adding a tiny bit of extra momentum. Even on just one block, there are multiple different types of momentum that can be done. These include running, force momentum, carpet 4.5 timing, rex backwards momentum, and loop momentum. Each of these makes you go slightly further than the last, but each one is also significantly more difficult. Everyone knows you can use something like slabs to add some height to a jump, but there are a total of 16 different heights of blocks that can be used in Minecraft. Neos are called this because of the famous scene in the movie The Matrix, where the character named Neo is moving around bullets, dodging them perfectly, analogous to how the player must move around and dodge the pillar in the way of the jump. When doing extremely precise and difficult jumps, players will often use coordinates to line themselves up down to 1 1,000th of a block, or sometimes even more. Because of a mechanic known as tiers, sometimes a player will be unable to fit into areas with a 2 block ceiling, even though they should be able to. This has been fixed in later versions of Minecraft though. By simply adding or removing momentum, the same exact jump can have drastically different difficulties. The furthest jump anyone has ever done was 69 blocks, performed by Ant Venom, using many different mechanics such as ice, head hitters, and damage boosting. Despite cobwebs slowing you down, you can actually complete further jumps than normal with them because you move sideways faster than you fall through them. In Minecraft, you actually jump slightly higher than one block, meaning that a three block ceiling causes a player to bump their head slightly early. For this reason, jumps with a three block ceiling can often be much harder than their regular counterpart. Another way to jump higher than should be possible is to use a glitch known as a blip up. When landing perfectly in between two blocks of different heights, Minecraft basically gets confused and allows a player to make higher jumps than normal. Neos need to be performed differently depending on whether they are on the X or Z axis of the world. If done on the Z axis, a player can get right against a block with no issues. However, if the Neo is on the X axis, the player must back up slightly to avoid hitting the block. This was changed in later versions of Minecraft, making all Neos act like X-facing ones, but most parkour players still play on 1.8. Something called a semi-head hitter timing can also be used to bypass this X-facing blockage in a way, although the player still needs to back up slightly. As of right now, Minecraft's most precise jump requires 17 45 strafes in a row, shown here by Classical MPK. If a player flips a trapdoor while being in its hitbox, the player will clip through the trapdoor and travel through it like it's air. This is usually how the winged Neo is performed. While regular head hitter timing is one of the most famous timings in parkour, there is actually a variation of it known as burst head hitter timing, which makes the player go slightly further. It is of course harder to perform than a regular head hitter timing though. While a single Neo is quite easy, it can also be done on cobble walls, fences, and glass panes. 
with each one being much harder than the last. And finally, the last thing you might not know about Minecraft Parkour is that subscribing to Cup Stacking Kid is proven to make you a better parkour player instantly. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time. <laughs>